Hi, I'm Raquel Porter with Balloon Splendor. I'm going to show you how to render my tulip column as a uh, digital file, building blocks specifically. We will build this tapered column and we will build a tulip and then we're going to build this spray. So let's get started. This column, I know I used a six foot pole. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and drop a six foot pole in here. My scale is for every one inch in my drawings that's going to represent a foot in real life. So I'm going to go up here and change it to six feet. So there's my column. I happen to have wrapped it in white ribbon uh, so that you can't see the pole through the design. I typically wrap my poles in the color of the balloons that are going around it. That's how I roll. Okay, two ways to build your, your duplets. If you've been following my series, you know you've got building blocks that you can use, like that. I know this bottom row I built at 9 inches. So if we call up our handy dandy little calculator, I know 9 divided by 12 is 0.75. So I can uh, make sure that these are at 0.75, which happens to be the size of my building block. Or if you haven't built your building blocks yet, you can go ahead and, and make your balloons manually. You draw a circle and then you just want to make sure these are the same size. And then you want to lock your aspect ratio. Okay, and that way you can size your balloons and they will stay circular. So if we're going to do that, the next row I built at 8 inches, so going back to my handy dandy calculator. 8 divided by 12 is 0.67, so we can change this to 0.67, and that would be my next row right there. Okay, copy, paste to put the balloon behind it, like that, and I'm going to go ahead and pull these up for just a moment. When you're wrapping balloons, quote unquote, on Publisher, make sure that you're placing your balloons as if though you are actually building the design. Okay, Even though it may look prettier differently, if you're working with balloons, they go around the pole, that will just help your design stay lined up properly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this up there. And right now that balloon's in the back, and obviously it's supposed to be in the front, so I'm going to pull it to the front, like that. And I'm going to highlight them all, I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to group them. Okay and then I'm going to change them to white because our column is white. And I'm going to go ahead and change the line color around them to be this uh, softer gray. And there's the next row right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and send this back. Oh, look what it did, it put the pole all the way back there too, the pole. Oops, the pole goes all the way in the back. Okay, so that's something you want to watch for. Uh, as you can see, this balloon here, when the quad is facing, uh, when the corner is facing you of the quad, that balloon tends to be on top. So if you end up having to ungroup it to pull that one balloon forward, that's okay too. You can do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom one. I'm going to do a control C and a, a control V to copy and paste. And I am forever checking my locked aspect ratio. Now I know that's done. And I'm going to go ahead and resize that to uh, 7 inches. So calculator tells me 7 divided by 12 is 0.58 inches. 0.58 inches. I'm going to slide that down like that. Pull that forward again. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how to pull it out of the building blocks up here. We'll pull that one down. We're going to lock my uh, selection things are hard sometimes. Okay, lock the aspect ratio and we're going to change it to, I think this was a Point six, so I know point six. I know six inches is half a foot, so we'll just go to point five there, and there it is. Okay, I'm going to pull this one forward. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to ungroup that and pull this balloon forward a little bit more too. Okay, so 
so in my design, one, two, three, four, I had four of the bigger ones, and I think on the top I only had three. So I'm going to go ahead and select my three bottom rows. I didn't quite select that. Okay, I'm going to select my three bottom rows, and I'm going to do a Control C to copy and a Control V to paste. And then I'm going to hold my Shift key down and my right arrow down to pull that apart. And then I'm going to group it. Okay? And then I'm going to rotate it. I want to flip it vertical, just like that. And I'm going to grab it up here and I'm going to put it right at the top because I remember I twisted that top quad right at the top of my of the pole. Alright, so now we need to fill in with the little balloons. Um, so let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and select the last two quads I wrapped on there, Control V, Control, Control C, Control V to copy and paste. I'm going to move it over and then I'm going to pull this one down to separate them. And they were at 4 inches, so if I go to my calculator and I go 4 divided by 12, that's 0.33 inches. So I can go up here and I can go 0.33 inches for that. And did I? I did lock that. I can go ahead and just change it here also, 0.3. Actually it's going to be point. Oh, look what it did. Okay. I'm going to do Control Z to undo. Control Z is a very useful tool to undo whatever it was you did that didn't come out right. Okay. Oh, it's because it didn't do the. Okay. I. Why is it doing that? That's interesting. Okay, well, now it's showing up. Are those actually grouped? Oh, you know what? They weren't grouped. Now they're grouped. Okay, hello. 0.33. Control Z. Now ah, y'all making me nervous here. Okay, now I can go to point three three. All right, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna start building the rest of the column. Okay, so I've got a little ways to go here. So instead of just doing that laborious thing, I'm gonna go ahead and select those, copy and paste, and move them up and I'm going to be paying attention to my poll and make sure that every time oops, I already have it loaded as a paste so and every time I put them down I want to make sure that my balloons are centered on my pole as if though I was actually wrapping them on there okay look at that oh, it just happened to work out just just right I'm going to pull this forward a little bit okay so there is my tapered column check it out I'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing and I'm going to group it and I already have this saved as a building block so I'm going to call it a tapered column 2 just to show you how to do that there it is okay so if I happen to delete this I can go into my building blocks and there they are there's the first one I'd used and there's the second one okay there it is and I don't think I locked my aspect ratio. I've been trying to do that before I save my building blocks to save me a lot of rework. Okay, so there's the column. So before I move on to the tulips, one of the things that I like to do when I'm when I come up with a design that I know I'm that I'm gonna sell over and over again, I will create some notes for myself. So under the home tab there's a tool here called Draw a Text Box. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my text box and because this is how I like to go, I'm going to go ahead and just outline it. So now I know where my text box is. I'm going to go ahead and make my letters a little bit bigger so I can actually see them. So the formula to make mine with my precision error, and everybody's precision error is a little bit different, so you're going to have to size these and then figure out what your formula is, but on mine, um, this top row here is, if my machine is set to a 2.0, 2 then that works. The next row is a 1.5, and the next row was a 1.0, and then the little balloons were 0.4. And actually the first note I would put is a 6 foot pole. So I know next time I go to build this that I used a 6 foot pole, and these were my measurements, 
and I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in my picture. And here I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, so I had twelve of them in there. So my scaling isn't exactly right. And then my next row here, I had a point six, one point zero, one point five, and a two point zero. And what I would actually do is tell myself which size balloons they were. And I know from my own shorthand that uh, everything is going to be 11 inch until I give myself a new size. Okay, whoops, where did everything go? There it is. So when I go to reorder balloons to recreate this, I know everything is 11 inch balloons except for this one row because it says 5 inches there. That's how I do it. You create your own shorthand that makes sense to you. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this aside for now and let's talk about the tulips. Okay, I'm going to pull this off here. If you pull your things off the, the paper and they disappear, if you go up here to view make sure the scratch area is checked because if you turn it off you're going to lose everything that's in your scratch area. So if things disappear that's why. Okay, so let's talk about the tulips. We're going to build those. These were made out of 260 cues and the stems were 260 cues. So if I want to digitally create that I'm going to come up here and I'm going to use my moon shape. Okay, I think that sort of looks like a 260Q on edge where it's twisted together here and there and it's a little wider there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that. Did I have that selected? Control C and Control V. There it goes. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate that like that. Okay? And I'm going to bring them together. I'm going to actually overlap them a little bit. And then I'm going to draw an oval inside of there so that I can color everything the same color. Okay, so I've got uh, this oval selected here and I'm going to go ahead and send it back. So we've got something that looks a little bit like a, a balloon twisted tulip. Okay, I know it's not perfect but it's good enough for what we're doing here. It's going to communicate to the client what you're trying to do. I'm going to go ahead and put the little pinch twists that I did up at the top and I'm going to copy and paste that. Okay, and I'm going to select the whole thing and I'm going to group it. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to do save as building block and I'm going to call it a tulip. So next time I want to make a tulip, I have a tulip. I'm going to pull this down a little bit because I think my tulips were actually a little bit longer. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to save that as a building block and I'm going to call it a longer tulip. And some tulips are whoops, short and round. So if you wanted to do a little short round one, you can resize it. You can do whatever you want. Okay, let's talk about the stem now. The stem. Uh it's not just a straight line that has been turned green and made thick, right? That would be one option. Uh, I think we can actually change the weight. Uh, maybe not. Okay, but that's not what I did. Instead we're going to go up here to this slick little curve. There's a couple of different kind of curves. We're going to go with this one. And what this one will do is allow you, every time I click my, my mouse button, it's going to let me change directions a little bit. Okay, bottom of the balloon, I'm going to start coming back up again. And having a lot of points is important because as you will see here in a minute, if I need to edit my shape, I can right click and I can edit the points. And everywhere you see these little squares is an opportunity for me to edit the points. So if I wanted to give this more of a curve, I can do that. Okay. 
You can spend a lot of time fine-tuning, making things look perfect, or they can just be good enough. I'm going to go ahead and turn this a little bit. I think the tulips tend to hang a little bit differently like that. Okay, and this is an open space. I wonder if that's going to color in. Oh, that's a line color. Yeah, look at that. It still colors in even though my line isn't closed. Okay, and I also had a couple of pinch twists at the bottom here to stabilize the design. So I'm going to go ahead and borrow. No, I'm not. I'm going to draw new ones here. I'm going to go ahead and draw a couple of new little pinch twists. Copy and paste, and I'm going to group them together just like that. And I'm going to paint them green. Okay. I'm going to turn them a little bit, and I'm going to put them in there. All right. If sometimes when I, I put things in place, they may not be positioned correctly. If your design looks like that, just send it back. Whoop, wrong button. Send it back. Okay. So there's a tulip. Not too bad. If you wanted to create a couple of different stems, I just did a control uh, copy and a control paste. You can extend it a little bit. You can change the curve a little bit. Okay, so let's say we wanted to have a couple of them, a couple of different sizes, copy and paste again. Um, some of them are going to be a little bit shorter, so let's go ahead and do a little shorter ones. Okay. So I'm going to set these aside for now. I don't know if I'll use those, maybe. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste several of my tulips because I'm going to want different colors. I'm going to want yellow tulips. Whoops, I didn't select the whole thing on there. Okay. I say whoops a lot, don't I? That's all right. And let's do some orange tulips. And let's do some red ones. I didn't click on it. Click. And let's do some pink ones too. Uh, those really aren't Qualitex colors there, are they? So let's go to more fill colors. See if we can find something that looks a little more okay, close enough. And let's go ahead and find something that looks kind of like a wild berry. That's not wild berry. That's a little bit more like a wild berry. All right, and let's go ahead and do a copy and a paste. One more for a purple flower. Because we can. Purple. Uh, where's a good purple? I don't know. If you're really particular about your colors, you can always pull up a Qualitex color chart. And, oh, how funny. You can pull up a Qualitex color chart and do the sample fill color. But I'm not going to take the time to do that. Okay, so now I've got my, my tulips. Um, did I do a log aspect ratio? I didn't. Oh, bothersome. Okay, so I think, I don't know, let's try this. Let's see if I, if I selected them all, can I do a lock aspect ratio? I can. Okay, cool. And so I can go ahead and size these smaller. So when I made these, I know they were five inches, the bubbles were five inches, so the whole thing was probably six inches. So, hmm, six inches, should, this should be about a point five. There we go. So I can go ahead and select all of these because I did the lock aspect ratio on them and I can go ahead and make them all five inches just like that. Well, they're still all connected, how funny. Okay, and then for my, click the whole thing. For the stems, a 260 is two divided by 12, so about 0 0.16, 0 0.17. So we can go ahead and change 
I don't think that's going to work actually because the width is the width of the picture, not the width of the object. Okay, so we'll just have to work with that. We'll just play with it, right? Until it looks about right. All right, I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these guys over here. Copy this one. And then if we need more sizes, we'll use these sizes. Okay, so now we're going to put stems on all these guys. And we're gonna start building a bouquet on the top. So we need to connect these. Connect that to its stem group. That to its stem. So the quick keys I'm doing, I click on it, I hold the shift key and I click on the other element. Sometimes you'll see me drawing a box around it, sometimes I will hold the shift key and click. It's I don't know, I there's no rhyme or reason to how I do it. It's just wherever my brain is at the time. So, all right, so now we've got our column and we've got our balloons here. So we can go ahead and rotate these around and put them in. So, probably about there. So I have actually, when I built these, the, the, I inflated the stems all the way, burped them a little bit, put my pinch twists in there, and then at 22 inches from the flower, I twisted them and twisted them all together. So they all have a little bit of a stem hanging off there as some of this other greenery that came out. So I don't know, we'll see how that, how that works. Okay, then if we pull the column forward again, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to shorten up the columns, or the, the stems, so we can just shorten them up. I didn't want to do that. I wonder if I can crop it. I've never tried to crop that. Is it going to let me crop it? No, my crop doesn't show up. So what we need to do here is, hmm, I haven't done this before. This is the first time I've done this, so let's think about this here. What are we going to do? Okay, I think we can do, we can unlock it, and then I can shrink this up. Yep, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So. We'll go back through and redo this. So now y'all know that I'm making this stuff up as I go, right? I think I just locked them all together. I did. Oh, funny, funny. So I need to unlock them. Okay. Yep. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So, okay, that one is separate. Now I can kind of make them any way I want. So you can see these things do take quite a bit of time. So while I'm playing with these a little bit, whoops, while I'm playing with these, I, uh, I can, I want to let you know that I have made these available for sale if you want to buy them. Um, this particular one will come with the tapered column and it will come with the tulips and it will come with, did I, put, I didn't put these back together again. So you will get two for the price of one. So if you're interested in buying these from me, just give me uh, an email 
contact at balloonsplendor.com. Um, if there's enough of a demand, eventually I might, I don't know, create a store or something. But we'll see. You guys are all pretty creative. You'll probably figure out how to do these yourselves and be doing your own videos before long. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and build these back together here. Oops, didn't grab it. I didn't connect that one either. Shift, group. So oftentimes when I'm building things, I'm going to go ahead and rotate that one. I'm like listening to music or something because this can be very tedious. It also takes longer when you're talking through it, I'm discovering. Okay. So the other way to rotate it too, you can just grab it and turn it that way, but sometimes you'll lose your your scale. Things might come out a little bit fatter or skinnier or whatever. So when you've got a bunch of these built like this, the other thing you can do is you can go ahead and select them. Do a copy and a paste. Shift, get them out of the way here for just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and, well, I'll just group them. But what I was going to say was, after you've copied and pasted them, if you shift them a little bit, then you can put them back on and you'll have like twice as many flowers. So I'm just going to go ahead and, oh, look at that, it just selected the one. I hate that feature about Publisher, I have to say. Um, there we go. Flip horizontal gives you the mirror image. So we can do that and rotate it just a little bit. And there you go. Now you got twice as many flowers. Okay? And I'm going to pull my column forward. So there there it is. That could very well be your digital mock-up for your client in fun spring colors. I would if I was going to actually submit this to my client, I would probably mix up my colors a little bit here. So we can do that by whoops, ungrouping and you can pick the flower and you can change the colors. Let's put a pink one up there. And you actually only need to change maybe a couple of them and then it won't look quite so mirrored. That was already orange. We don't want red. Let's put a purple one up there. Okay, so there it is. And then if you wanted to save the whole thing, you can select the whole thing, group it, and you can s save it as a building block. Column with tulips. There it is. I'm Raquel Porter with Balloon Splendor.